Hello and welcome to the Situation Report where we do our very best to give you the information you need to navigate an ever-changing culture. My name is Jeremy Stoliker and I'm here with Chad Robichaud. As the world quickly changes around us, one of the big questions that many of us have is what is going to happen to the economy? Now, most of us would mean our economy, maybe where we live, just right around our family. Uh, we might think a little bigger, what's going to happen in the American economy? But we're at a position, at a moment in time, where we need to think more globally. What is going to happen in the global economy? Uh, one of the phrases that we hear often, if you're paying attention, is the phrase, the great reset. We hear this bandied about, people are talking about it, it's been in the news for a long time. It went from being a, fr a fringe phrase, something we heard over here, to being something that's much more mainstream. And yet I think most of us don't understand what that means or where it came from. And so we brought on a great guest today and uh, Mark Moss is with us. Mark has been with us in the past. We talked about solar and renewable energies in the past. Uh, Mark is an investor, a business consultant, has a, an incredible YouTube channel. You need to spend some time there. Market disruptors, dealing with investing and success and mindset and a lot of other things and issues like the one that we're talking about today. And uh, he's helped us in the past and we knew he was the right guy to come on and talk about this. Uh, Mark, thanks so much for being with us um, all the way from Puerto Rico, not Costa Rica, as I got wrong <laughs> earlier on. But I uh, appreciate right. you coming on, man. Um, so uh, let's jump in. We've got some specific questions, but before we get there, uh, can you take some time and help us to understand what is meant by that phrase, the Great Reset, and then kind of where it came from, the history of that, and, and how we got to a place where we're even talking about this? Sure. Well, um, you, you mentioned that, that I was on the show once before, and we were talking about um, at the time, we were talking about the, the rolling blackouts that were in California, and uh, you were, uh, it was a follow-up to a video I had made, and the, vi the video I had made, I, I said that not only is it um, happening in California, but it's coming for the rest of the country, yeah. and then the rest of the world. So at the, at the time I made that video, and that was, I believe, August of 2020, and I said, it's coming for the rest of the country, and then just recently, look what happened in Texas. Yeah. And so the reason why I said it's coming... <laughs> yeah, I'm in Texas. Reason, so like, yeah. Why said, <laughs> yeah, you get it, right? You get it. So the reason why I said it's coming for the rest of the country and even the world is because it's all about policy. The reason why we have those issues is because of policy. And the reason why I, I jump back into that real quickly is because now going forward into the, into the Great Reset, you have to understand this is all a continuation. It's all about the policy. And so where did that come from? Well, one, it's been something that's been in the works for a really long time. It started, uh, so there's the, the world isn't really being run by uh, our president hmm. in the United States or any other country for that matter. So everybody shocking, got super, shocking statement that you just yeah, made. <laughs> yeah, everybody got so worked up over the election, like uh, whether it was Trump or Biden and this and that. And, you know, while that's important, um, there's a level above that where really the decisions are being made and uh, the world's really being run by what we call NGOs or non-government organizations. So these are non-elected leaders. And I'm talking about World Economic Forum, World Health Organization, World Trade Organization, right. the UN, the IMF, et cetera. And so the World Economic Forum was founded by a guy, Klaus Schwab, uh, 40, 50 years ago. They do a meeting every single year in Davos. Some people have started to hear that word Davos and kind of understand what that means. It's Davos, Switzerland, where all the elites go to every single year. And these are the people that are kind of really pulling the strings. And anyway, Klaus Schwab wrote a book last year titled <laughs> COVID-19, <laughs> The Great Reset. Wow. So uh, for anybody wanting to know where that term came from, uh, I mean, maybe it started before that. They probably started talking about it, throwing around before that. But he wrote a book titled The Great Reset. Yeah. Wow. So ideas, ideas like the Great Reset. I mean, we've talked, we've talked about stuff like this all the time, but rarely are ideas like this taken seriously. I mean, even if you had told me this two years ago, I'd have thought conspiracy, you know, th theory stuff. So what's led up to the point to make this is a real conversation right now? It's really a thing that the world can be go through this Great Reset. 
Well, I mean, what's led up to it is, is, uh, is well, as, as the book says, right, COVID-19. And so um, Klaus has come out, the WF, the, the World, World Economic Forum has come out many times. And again, like the book says that we must use this COVID, um, this, this, this thing, this event to our advantage. It's time for a great reset of capitalism is what they're basically calling for, a reset of capitalism. And so again, right, uh, what is it? Let no good crisis go to waste. I think that was uh, Emmanuel or whoever said that in the beginning. Yeah. Um, but, but we have this COVID-19 um, event, whatever you want to call it, happening, and they don't want to let that go to waste. And so Klaus Schwab, now is the time, he says, to you know, see this great reset of, of capitalism is what they're calling for. And the thing is, is that, um, you know, what, what's the quote? If, you, if, if For those that don't understand history, yeah. they're doomed to repeat it. And so, you know, history, whatever, doesn't necessarily repeat, but it rhymes. Well, it kind of actually repeats. And so um, you have to kind of go, first you have to kind of look at what they're saying, and then you have to go back and look at where the origin of these, these thoughts and statements come from. And then it gives you this picture of exactly where we're going. So you want me to break that down for you? Yeah, please. Yeah, please. So um, you've probably heard the saying going around quite a bit, uh, by 2030, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy, right? So. Uh, this was per the World Economic Forum. They were putting this out. They were running ads of saying this. And just in the last couple months, six months, they've started to get so much pushback. They're starting to pull some of that content down. And so it's hard to kind of find that today, but mm -hmm. it was very big and evident at the time. But basically, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. So, okay, so if I own nothing, who owns everything? Right. Think about that for a second. Yeah. And then and then then we'll we'll all be happy. So we're all going <laughs> to live together and we all share everything. Nobody owns anything. We all share everything and everything's happy. Nobody works hard, but we all have overabundance of stuff. Right. That's the picture they paint for us. Kind of like we're living in a commune. Right. Yeah, right, right. Where we, we, we live in a commune and we all share everything and everybody's happy. Right. Right. Oh, kind of like a like a commune, kind of like communism, kind of, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and so, so, so it's, it's it's important to understand this, right? So, communism, you know, I grew up on, and we're all roughly the same age, whatever. We grew up under the Cold War, right? There was communism in in Russia and whatnot, but communism it was actually kind of more socialism that they were living under. And the reason why I have to un, um, break the down the difference is because what people believe Karl Marx, per his writings. What he believes is that um, socialism comes to destroy. So you have capitalism and capitalism has to be destroyed. Karl Marx said, um, I have a vision where I'm walking through the ashes of the world, right? He wanted to burn the world down and walk mm. through the ashes to rebirth a new society. So they believe that you have to go from capitalism to socialism, which is what tears everything down. And then only once it's been completely torn down and uh, reset, can then you move into this utopia known as commune mm. living in, you know, communism. Yeah. All right. So now that you kind of have that little bit of a bigger context, then all of a sudden the pieces start kind of fitting in. So we have to use this COVID-19 as a way to great reset, kind of like what socialism does, right? It resets everything so that then we can make it through to the utopia of owning nothing and everybody's just being happy about it. Does that kind of make sense when you yeah. kind of understand from a bigger lens? Yeah. yeah am, am I, am I just, uh, so, you know, when I first would hit, we're hearing about, was hearing about the great reset, I thought this was like a sneaky thing. It's like a bad thing that, uh, to me, cause that's to me, that's what it sounds like, but they're speaking about it in terms of positivity. Sure. Yeah, positive. Well, I mean, he wrote a book called The Great sure, Reset. Yeah, exactly. And you can go, I mean, for everybody listening, you can just go right to their website, world, world economic or it's actually WEF. Uh, and then it's slash great reset. <laughs> and it's right there on the um, on the on the website. You can read the book. And so um, I know a lot of this stuff sounds super far fetched. And as you said, maybe conspiracy theory, whatever. Um, but it's right on their website. And uh, these yeah. are the things that they've put out for us to read. Um, this is the world that they're painting for us. Um, and, and we, and we know who, all the people who are involved, right? Just go to the website and look at their pictures and, and read their names. Um, and you can see exactly what the plan is, but again, it's to, it's to break capital. And he even calls it out a great reset of capitalism. So they want to, they just great reset of capitalism. Does that sound kind yeah. of like what Karl Marx was talking about by 
burning it down, right? And so we have to reset it so that we can yeah. move to the Utopia Promised Land. I wanted to take a minute to let our audience know about the work that we do through an incredible veterans nonprofit called the Mighty Oaks Foundation. Many of our nation's warriors struggle with the hardships of military service and reintegration back into civilian life. Often they leave broken homes in their aftermath and comprise one of the most at-risk groups for suicide, with over 20 veterans who take their lives every single day. Mighty Oaks tackles this critical issue with our faith-based peer-to-peer resiliency and recovery programs offered at no cost to our honored servicemen and women at beautiful ranches across the United States. Mighty Oaks has one of the highest success rates of any program available anywhere. Visit MightyOaksPrograms.org to learn more about how you can make a direct impact in the lives of our servicemen and women to help them find a new life purpose through hope in Christ. Again, that's MightyOaksPrograms.org. Witnessing the transformation that these men and women go through is absolutely incredible. There are no words to describe seeing warriors restored to the lives they were created to live, changing their legacies for eternity. Your support is needed now more than ever and will ensure that our programs are here for our warriors who are in desperate need. Again, the website is MightyOaksPrograms.org. So a lot of what happens in the economy most people are unaware of. You know, we worry about making ends meet, moving month to month, that's where most people live. And so when we take a step back and we try to view this in terms of what you just described, what are, so it's a two-part question, <laughs> what are the signs, what are we looking for, how do we know this is happening, other than they've called it out, they said they're going to do it, um, what are the elements that we're going to see take place, and, we're, and we can then go, that is connected to what they said over there. Uh, so what are we looking for? And, sure. and and do you think that this is viable? I mean, having an idea is one thing, wanting to lock the whole world down is, is an idea, but can it happen? Will it happen? What is it gonna look like? Sure, so um, what I would say is um, people need to, um, people have to learn to look past words and look more at like actions, right? Like don't, don't listen to what I say, look at what I do kind of a thing, right? Yep. And so, you know, today we've seen the left pick up on saying that like, capitalism is evil capitalism is, is slavery and it's like well capitalism is like uh you know controlling my capital and having like a free exchange like a free market of goods and so yeah. slavery isn't free so like just because you call <laughs> slavery capitalism it doesn't work right it's right like, right you kind of have to look past that and so what i would do is i'd say let's throw all the words away for a minute and instead of socialism or fascism or communism or whatever, capitalism, and instead of any of those words, just look at the, the world in this way. There's two systems that we have. There's either one, a captured, controlled, centrally planned model, or a free, open, competitive model. Yeah. Right? That's what we have. Now, whatever ism you want to attach to it, those are really what we have. And so how do we know we're going that way? Well, socialism or communism as Klaus Schwab says, you'll own nothing, you'll be happy, is obviously a captured and controlled planned model, right? Yep. Um, versus what, you know, what I would think of when I say capitalism, or really you should have to probably say free market capitalism in front of it, where you and I are each free to determine what's best for our own self-interest, right? So think of the words like individualism, right? America was built on rugged individualism. Um, as opposed to collectivism. So, you know, individualism like we see in the United States or used to is, I believe, important because if you and I are different, then you and I are seeing the world differently and you and I see different problems in the world. Okay. And that means that I have a unique perspective on how to solve these problems. You see how to solve those problems. And so we can have creativity and we can have ideas and we can have imagination and we can solve problems and all these things. But what you may say, like in a kind of like a contrast, if you guys have seen some stuff that goes on in China, yeah. where, um, you know, kids are basically brought up in middle school, all reciting the same mantra, right? And yeah. they're like basically turning them into robots. And so that's just, that, that'd be the opposite extreme of that example. So I guess back to your, um, st your question, how do we see, what kind of signs are we looking at? Well, does the, does the economy appear to be um, becoming more free? or more, con more captured and more controlled, yeah. right? And I, I think it's obvious, right? It's becoming, yeah. and it's, it's what's called, uh, another word for it would be called a command economy versus a free, free economy. And so, 
So um, from a from an economy standpoint, if we want to look at like what what's going on in the United States right now specifically, is we have um, the, the United States is in massive debt, about twenty eight trillion dollars as of today. Um, we our deficit is about one hundred percent of what we're bringing in, so we're bringing in about three trillion. We're spending about six trillion. Um, so we're we're losing about three trillion a year. We have to borrow just to make ends meet. Yeah. On top of that, we've done just just now we're two months through the year. We've done six trillion of stimulus already this year. Uh, we'll probably be at ten trillion by the end of the year. So where does that money come from? More debt, of course, right? And where and who funds that debt, right? It goes through like a bond program. Well, nobody wants to fund it, so the bonds are going up like crazy. So the 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 yield or how much the bond pays the interest just since August of last year has gone up 150%. Wow. Imagine if the interest rate on in your home went up 150% yeah. in six, seven months. And now imagine if you had $28 trillion of debt. Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now at the same time, the dollar, the dollar index, when you look at the strength of the dollar compared to other currencies, it's dropping like a rock. So we have the bond yields going up and the currency coming down at the same time. That's a bad problem. So the Fed is stuck between two choices. Do we either strengthen the dollar to save that, but then the bond market blows up, or mm. do we save the bond market, but then the dollar falls apart? And that's kind of, they're like, damned if you do, damned if you don't, so to speak. Unless, unless there's one other choice. Mm. The one other choice is to take the free market. So the free market decides what the bond rates would be. The free market decides what the exchange rate of the dollar would be. Yeah. Well, if we don't like that, then what's our other option? To command it, to, to control take it. control yeah. of that market. And so that's where we're at right now. Um, yeah. if, if, if they're gonna try to even save this remotely, they're gonna have to take over the, the con more than they already have been. Of course, they, they've been taking it over slowly. N none of this stuff is like a light switch, like you flip it on and off, right? This right. is like, it happens uh, gradually, but you ask what the signs are. So these are the signs, like look for the economy to be taken more and more over. Look at Obamacare, took over two thirds of the economy yeah. in one fell swoop, yep. it was just taken over by the government. And so those are the signs that we're looking for. Yeah, wow. So with these with these trends and signs, I mean, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but what's what's life look like for everyday Americans five years from now? Well, what I'd say, um, two things. So first of all, um, I believe you guys are like a veteran podcast or whatever, right? And so um, what I would say, first of all, is that the future is not set and the future is for us to create. And so if we don't like the way that sounds, then we should be working hard to make sure that's not a reality for right. us. Uh, so that being said, um, what is the future that they have planned for us? <laughs> right, <laughs> that, might be, that might be a better question, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so I think that's, that's uh, abundantly evident right now. Um, just look at what's happened in less than 60 days of a new, um, a new uh, presidential administration, we might say. Yeah. Um, you know, I would imagine energy prices, I, I've been, I was predicting that energy prices would go through the roof. I mean, gas prices will be five bucks a gallon, I'm sure, probably very, very quickly here, like they were under Obama. Yeah. Um, they want energy prices to go up because they, they don't want you traveling. Now, I know this sounds sinister, but this is, this is the reality. Go back and read what they're saying. They don't want you traveling. They have to save the environment. So uh, eventually what it means is that your business is, is non-essential. Your business uh, doesn't comply, right? You can't run your business. Um, gas is now 10, 15 bucks a gallon. You can't really afford to drive. Of course, when gas goes up, all goods go up, right? That means food yep. goes up and clothes go, everything goes up. Yep. Um, and then eventually you can only drive two days a week and then you can only fly one time a month. And, and so it's just a, it's, it's just more and more and more and more and more control. And then of course, as you get more control, people don't like that. And so what, what do you do about that? Well, you have to squash any kind of dissent, right? And so um, if you look back at, you know, when countries went from a free open market to a captured control market, a socialism, you know, hundreds of millions of people have died. And the reason why it always, 100% of the time, 100% of the time always leads to violence is because some people aren't, aren't okay with that. Like I've had this farm in my family forever, this house or this business, and like the government wants to take, oh, right? So the difference is like we own it privately, free yeah. market, or the, the government owns it. And like, I don't want the government to own my factory right. or, my, or my farm. And so if I don't want them to own it, then how do they take it from me? By force, right? And so it just, it's just more control, more control. I think we'll probably see, you know, more businesses continue to get smashed down. Uh, obviously we're gonna see the government try to step in and, and get more people dependent on it. So more stimulus, more UBI, um, probably continue to have more 
um, division, right? Through we're already seeing that a lot of this education is going to the school system with critical race theory and whatnot. So continuing to divide people, continuing to make people victims, continuing to get people to depend on them, and more and more control of the economy. Wow. Um, one of the things you talk about uh, often on your YouTube uh, show, Market Disruptors, is how to prepare for you know a lot of different things. This would be one of those things. Um, I, I love watching you talk about even cryptocurrencies. I've learned so much from you just watching your show and, and learning about that and some other things. H how can people practically, you know, normal people, <laughs> uh, prepare for what's coming? What is it a mindset thing? Is it a put your money here? Is it think about money differently? Um, how do we prepare for something like this? Yeah, so I mean, everything always starts right here, right? It always starts with your own education and what you know. And so, you know, back to the question, like, what does it look like? And I said, well, hopefully that's not that's not the world that I want. And so right. I'm doing everything I can to make sure that world doesn't become a reality. Um, that's what they want. And we know that because they've been trying to get us there for a hundred years. Sure. And they keep trying and they keep calling it something different, but we but we understand what that is. And it's, and it's because it's human nature, right? Human nature. Unfortunately, some humans just want to control other people. Yeah. Um, and so I don't like that future. I don't want that future. So what, what, are, what am I doing? What can we do to protect ourselves? Um, I think one, it really starts with information. And so they're obviously trying to censor information. Um, I saw today they want to shut down the blog Substack because they don't like people being able to write their own blogs anymore. Hmm. Um, they, that free information is wow. a threat today, right? Because yeah. they want people thinking differently. And yeah. so Ronald Reagan said that freedom is never more than one generation away from being lost, right? It wasn't passed to us, it has to be passed down. And so it's important for each one of us to educate ourselves and, and then pass that information down. That's, that's really the first step and that's a bigger step. Uh, what we can do personally, I mean, especially when it comes to our money, is that um, what we want to do is we want to try to maintain our purchasing power. So this will go into like what's called a, a, a wealth transfer. So um, like in 2008 or 2005, six, seven, home prices are going up. Everybody rushes in, buys the top of the market. They yeah. crush the market. Everyone, millions of people lost their homes. The, the Fed gave the banks money to go buy them all up at pennies on the dollar. And now the banks own all the houses and people just rent them. And yeah. so the, the goal is for us to be able to maintain our purchasing power. Yeah. And so in order for us to do that, uh, we have to be careful with what we do. One, obviously don't get overextended with leverage. Uh, but two, I like to get things out of the financial system. So you talked about uh, Bitcoin. I think, you know, not everyone's into Bitcoin. That's okay. Think about gold. Think about things that are outside the financial market, outside the stock market, because if it's not apparent how manipulated that is by now, right. <laughs> then you're not, then you're not right. paying attention. Um, so those are a couple of things. <laughs> Yeah, wow. Um, last question, overall, you know, you, you paint a picture of what it could look like and you said, this is not the future I want. Are you optimistic? I look at technologies and, and I've talked to a lot of people about this. Um, when I look at the way technology is developing, that gives me some optimism about the future just because the ability to control information and the ability to control these processes and systems is really being taken away from the people that have traditionally, um, you know, controlled those things. Um, are you optimistic or are you cautiously optimistic or do you just say, well, let's get ready and see what happens? Well, I don't know if I would necessarily agree with that statement, though, because as they push us back into these centralized platforms, Twitter, Facebook, et cetera, um, censorship only becomes easier. Right. Um, not only not only is censorship easier, but they can use AI to um, show us content they want to manipulate the way we think. Right. So um, what's. But, but, but that being said, I think, uh, to answer your question, how do I feel about the future? Um, there is something that gives me hope. I believe that, you know, as technology could enslave us more, it can also open us up. And so what gives me hope is that the world is moving towards this totalitarianism, whatever you right. want to name it. For 100 right. years, they've been trying to get us there, and that's where it's going. In China, we have social credit systems. Over here, it's censorship everywhere. And there's that steady progression to more control by the governments. And what eventually breaks that? Like, do they wake up tomorrow and go, shoot, we have a little bit too much power. Why don't we give some freedom <laughs> back to the people? Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't, I just don't see how that would ever happen, right? Right. So what, what does break the grip? What does break that trend? And in my opinion, what breaks that trend is competition, right? There's two competing systems. So the control, the only thing that breaks the control is competition. And we're seeing this play out. We mentioned that I'm in Puerto Rico. 
Um, we've talked about how people are, are fleeing California to go to Texas. Texas is out competing California. So ca- Texas has taken all the big companies, <laughs> all the yeah. rich people from California, and now the governor's being recalled. Right. And there's a new governor running and he says, I'm gonna take in, um, state taxes down to zero. So he's realized like, shoot, we've, we've, we've squeezed too hard. We're being out competed. We have to lighten back up again, right? Um, and so that's pretty cool. But what happens when countries start to compete? Mm. Now, here's the important part. Now, when I was a kid growing up, people used to leave their countries, oppressive regimes to move to America. Right, <laughs> right. And when they would come, they had to come penniless because they couldn't get their money out of the banking system. They couldn't bring their real estate. They couldn't carry their gold. They came penniless. And so what, what does it really do to your country if you leave, but they keep all your wealth, right? What do they care, right? But there's something that changed that. And so that's Bitcoin. And so now with Bitcoin, it allows me to know 12 words in my head and take my wealth with me anywhere mm. in the world I want to go. And if I can leave to a country and take my wealth with me, right? and enough countries do that, then the United States or whatever country is going to go have to go shoot. If we don't lighten up, we're doomed. No different <clears throat> than what happened to China. China was very communist, and they decided they had to open up some free trade areas to bring a little bit of capitalism in in order to compete. Yeah. And so at the end of the day, the, at, at the end of all this, however long it takes, I, I just believe freedom, right? Free markets, it's always gonna, it's always gonna win because a, a captured control market, it just, it just won't work in the long run. Yeah. That's a little encouraging. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's fascinating, Mark. I, man, it's a big conversation. Uh, again, for folks that are watching or listening, uh, go check out Mark's YouTube channel. He discusses all of this and, and many more things related to it in, in great depth. Uh, Mark, how can people follow you and you know, where do you want them to go to, to learn what you're teaching. I mean, information is important. You're one of the guys on the front lines with this. Yeah. So, I mean, these are kind of the topics that I talk about uh, for the most part, right? And uh, I'm actually just about to record a video um, talking about the new central bank digital currencies that are coming out and how they're not really going to be used in the way that they're telling us they're going to be used. Hmm. Um, so, yeah, YouTube is, is the best place. Just just go on there and search Mark Moss. Um, that's where I'm the most active. And then uh, I'm pretty active on Twitter as well. I'm at number one Mark Moss. And so if you want to message me, ask me any questions, I'm, I'm pretty active there as well. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Really, really appreciate it. And uh, hope you're having a wonderful day in Puerto Rico. Uh, sounds like a wonderful place to be. Man, so appreciate Mark. Again, uh, these issues are deep and complex, and he brings such clarity uh, and really gives us a, a summary, kind of a, a big overview of what's happening. And I'm so grateful for that. Uh, these are important things for us to understand. And yet, Many of us don't have the time or the ability necessarily to figure it out on our own. So appreciate Mark so much for, for uh, uh, enlightening us and illuminating some of these truths. I want to boil our conversation down a little bit more if I can, give you some takeaways. This is today's situation report. Number one, uh, the policy decisions that we see playing out right now uh, really go back many, many years. For more than 100 years, the governments of the world have been trying to gain control because that's what governments do. Uh, That's their natural, I would say, digression, not progression, is to gain control, to take control, and to put the people they're supposed to care for under their control. This has been a long process. It's been happening. Uh, Mark said it like this. It's not a light switch that's that's flipped on is something that happens over time. So we need to know there's a long history of this. Uh, The second thing we need to understand is that information is key, information is power. Although we don't necessarily have the ability within ourselves to investigate, to figure it out, to come to conclusions, there are so many sources that we can go to to receive what we just received from Mark and others that talk about these things. Uh, We need to see what those in power have said they're going to do, observe what they are doing, and latch on to some folks who can help us to understand exactly what's going on. Information is power. If we know what's happening, if we know what to look for, then we can adjust and we can uh, really uh, make sure that the future we envision is the one that comes to pass. Uh, The final thing, and this is hopeful, we need to have confidence in the free markets. The free markets have worked. It doesn't mean they work flawlessly all of the time. But when there's competition, Mark made this point so clearly, when there's competition, 
Good things happen for those that want to uh, control their own future and provide for their families and leave a legacy, financial or otherwise, behind. The free markets and competition will make that happen. We need to get our money as much as we can outside of the system and allow competition to take place, and that will move us forward. Again, so many wonderful things that were said here and uh, really probably warrants a second conversation. But whatever you do, go back and uh, look for more from Mark on his YouTube channel and elsewhere. Uh, so many great things. But that's it for today. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Look forward to being with you next time.